prior to his mixed martial arts career. So he's here to have some fun and challenge himself in a different arena. Ladies and gentlemen, live from the Ebu Vale Sports Center here in Wales in the United Kingdom, it is now time for the Polaris 25 Super Fight. Presented by Warrior, creators of the world's tastiest protein bar. Try Warrior Crunch today. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner. He stands five feet, eight inches tall, official weight, 75 kilos. Representing Team Kalban from the United Kingdom, he is the UFC veteran and Commonwealth wrestling medalist. Introducing Mike Gerundi. And now let's welcome his opponent fighting of the red corner. He stands five feet, seven inches tall, official weight, 74.3 kilos. Representing Sarah Longo and Funk Academy, he is the former UFC Bantamweight Champion. Introducing from the United States, Aljamain Funkmaster Sterling. Your referee for this bounce is Oli Geddes, Aljamain Sterling and Mike Grundy. Now a reminder, this is under our traditional Polaris rules. The 10 minute bout is split into thirds and it's a 10-9 must essentially for each third of the bout. That's gonna encourage the fighters to keep the pace high throughout and you can see the quick wrestling exchanges from these two, both very low, very bassy, looking to get some purchase on the head with the collar ties. Yeah, I mean, this is like a real traditional wrestling stance, right? Before what we've seen in the, the jiu-jitsu yeah. guys is a more upright position. This is like low, good base, lead hand down. Might gain that deep underhook to start with. Yeah, Sterling really bit down on that overhook position though to counter. Yeah, this is gonna be a very different looking match to most of the matches that we're used to seeing here on Polaris because you have the two people with an MMA and wrestling base and uh, they just grapple differently. Yeah, I asked, uh, I actually asked Al Jermaine yesterday at uh, the press conference, you know, for people, we've seen you, you grapple in MMA, but you know, grappling is, is not MMA. Um, so what can we expect to see from you in a, a jiu-jitsu context like this? And he said, man, I can, I can do everything. He said, don't be surprised if I pull a Goku Plata. I mean, I would be surprised. <laughs> if he yes. I think everybody would, in all honesty. So would we. Thanks to, I our hope he does. thanks to our sponsors, Warrior. Warrior Crunch Protein Bars are available on Amazon or in every local Asda store now. Uh, I mean, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I know um, Aljamain Sterling does have some like grappling experience, just straight grappling experience, competing in a few competitions. Um, so he's not unused to this format. He is weighing heavy on the back of that head. You can really see the, the color change as the blood drains away from the back of Mike Grundy's neck there. You know, Grundy, a, a lot of very accomplished uh, UFC competitors in the gym he trains at. You know, they, Team Capone have a whole host of notable UFC veterans, including the current number four heavyweight, Tom Aspinall, uh, and former welterweight title challenger, Darren Till. It's a real wrecking ball of a room up there. Oh, Grundy trying to shuck under, find his way inside. Gets a good snap down there. And we've got about a minute till we get through our first period. And that's going to be a tough one for mm. the judges to score. You've got to say, is, is it, you know, has Grundy moved the former bantamweight champion around uh, enough? I mean, that was a, a good counter shock there. Yeah, very hard to score. It looks like uh, Grundy's starting to bite on some of those feints a little bit, to use the MMA term. You know, I mean, Grundy insists he's been training extremely consistently, uh, you know, even before he got the call for this match. Because it was relatively late notice, wasn't it? Yeah, We're 12 days. 12, 12 days. days, yeah. Yeah, I mean, looking at him, if you look at his quads, they're in pretty decent shape, you know. Yeah, and of course, uh, you know, Al Jermaine has been in and earned himself a little bit of a rest after his last uh, UFC appearance. 
I know he has obviously been training and he's not going to ever be out of shape, but... Well, that's it. He's, he's, he's a high, absolute highest level in MMA in the UFC, former champion, only recently losing that title. Oh, good shot. He Finds his way off the mat, though. Sterling's going to be in absolute phenomenal shape. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, <laughs> I can't see 10 minutes, at, at, you know, a sprint pace even being a problem for no. him. We're about four minutes down now, so coming yeah. into our second period. Well, trying to clear those grips quickly. We did see an excellent shot from Sterling, and he did get all the way in. He just ran out of mat space to do it, and that's He's a lovely try. Again. Yeah, look at that tricep on grip. It. Oh. oh, and again, they're just going to find the edge of the map. Yeah, it's a shame because Sterling turned him back inside, and then uh, the call was there. It should be pointed out, this is not a small mat space here. It's 10 meters by 10 meters. It's about, about 30 feet by 30 feet. It's double it. Uh, that's what I say. Bigger mat. <laughs> Grundy snaps down, motions as though he's going to go searching on that uh, fireman's carry. I mean, he's starting to uh, like chase a little bit more, which is great. Halfway point coming up here. I do hope we see this match uh, make its way to the floor at some point. Yeah, it's certainly something we were hoping for, but it's also you can you can sort of understand why they're both sticking to their their bread and butter. Yeah, I think the referee is probably going to have a. Yeah, he's going to have a word with them. Yeah, yeah but so it's kind of a word do much. A dual stalling call. And uh, the grip's getting a little bit more angry now. I mean, I have to say, I spoke to to Mike Grundy, um, you know, and he was a little bit uh, not annoyed, but just you know, he kind of expected people would say he's an underdog, but he doesn't see it that way. Well, you, you very rarely would you. No, I, I don't expect to get an athlete to admit to, to yeah. you know, uh, that particularly. But Sterling going searching again. On the front headlock. counters, front headlock series for him. Ollie's letting it go on now, I think. Yeah, as they were on their knees, Ollie let it continue just a little bit more. Just unfortunate we keep finding the edge of the mat in these yeah. exchanges. We don't get to quite see the scramble through. I mean, it is going to be inter in incredibly tough to try and score. Right, you've got 40 yeah. seconds left rounds, in this yeah. second period. And you're going to have to have made two decisions, neither of which I have a clue. Yeah, no. I mean, in these scenarios, you do just kind of want to say, well, can we not have a draw? Because anything, at mm. this point, if this was right. to be the entire match, anything other than a draw... Seems draw unfair. Kind of, yeah. Yeah. I mean, Grundy doing a good job with those snap downs, and you can. I wonder if Sterling's perhaps a little bit surprised by some of them. We're just about to enter the third and final round. Yeah, we have indeed. Round. Three minutes left on the clock here. And the referee again is going to warn them for some action. Oh, and he's going to implement the stalemate rule, which puts them both on combat base. And then me. And they're immediately <laughs> going to stand back up. I mean, well, he tried. Oli Geddes shakes his, uh, his head, but uh, he did try. I mean, if the idea here is that he's going to start them in combat base and one of them's going to pull guard, yeah. it's just not going to happen. Yeah. No, but again. Um, now oh. he's on the. Grundy's on this front headlock position. Yeah, I mean, Sterling went to go and look for. Switching to the hips now. That's great little movement yeah, from Grundy. Going oh. to the back and easily escaped by Sterling. Two and a half minutes left here. Nice sprawl. Rules Grundy out. Who can see the for headlock oh, here? On a big crank guillotine. on the neck. He's, he hasn't got a whole lot of purchase with the legs. No, I though. think the grips have been broken as well. Yeah, I saw his hand readjust. I mean, you've got to think there's something there in terms of control because Grundy isn't really doing anything yeah. from here. Trying to fight the hands. Oh, and now the leg comes over. This is the postural control he perhaps needed to finish this. Squeezing right on the edge of the mat. They're going to let it go till the head comes out. But this is going to be the most significant act, uh, moment of the fight so far. Yeah, I mean, he's got... The referee just checking. He's still awake. Checking, I mean, still we, did, awake. we did have an issue in the uh, prelims. Yeah, really oh, I was just using it to try and sweep, but no dice. Well, he's also up against the edge of the mat there, which is going to be tough. And Grundy's giving the referee a thumbs up to say, I'm still here. It's just tough to see the grips and what's going on deep inside there. And Sterling bails out. 
But yep. That was a very good attempt for him, and yep. very clearly going to give him the advantage in this final period. But the question is, is who who got who won the, the first, first two? two? Yeah. Because here's the thing: without you know the, the the scoring system that we have, is those first two rounds have to go in one of two directions. Right. There is no. Despite draw. the fact that it was very very close the first yeah. two, and this third round may be super one sided. Has ah, much better connection there from uh, Sterling. Oh, trying to work getting it. Getting thrown around. He's trying to shuck to the back. They're both trading off that uh, that whizzer. A minute left. Closing seconds are approaching very thick and fast here. Looking for any last grips they can get. Of course, they're going to be very sweaty at this point, so the snap downs are going to have a little less purchase. The wrist grips are going to have a little less purchase. Maybe even their feet as they shoot. 30 look, seconds yeah. left. Oh, again, Sterling goes searching, but he gives it up when Grundy weighs heavy on the head, looks to shuck him off to the back. It's a good throw by, but they disengage once more, and we've got 10 seconds left here. Grundy, Grundy with a big shot on it. in on the leg. It's a big sprawl from Aljo, who looks to try and sit to the back here. This is like straight-up wrestling it is. now. <laughs> just had a, a classic wrestling match. Yeah. But a 10-minute wrestling match. They don't usually last yeah. that long. Yeah, I mean, I think we're, we're safely going to say that uh, Aljo got that third period. But guys, unless you want to throw your, your hat in the ring for who got the first two, I honestly have no idea. Yeah, I mean, I think that in my perspective, Aljamain works a little bit harder yeah, in the I'd first. Say so. And then Mike in the second, I think, was the, the more active in those two rounds. But, you know, I'm not a judge. I'm just solely basing it on the, what I thought who was there the most work. You know, this was that good moment from um, from Mike. You know, he got around to the side, got around to the hips, just couldn't control it. And, and he was that yeah. arm in guillotine, and I don't think it was at any point super close to getting a tap there, but no. certainly the most significant bit of grappling we saw on the yeah. ground. Ladies and gentlemen, we go to the judges' scorecards, and they see it for your winner by unanimous decision. Uh, Aljamain Funkmaster! Sterling. I'm here with our winner, Al Jermaine Sterling. Al Jermaine, con congratulations. Uh, a bit of back and forth in the opening two periods of that match. How did you feel about the start of that fight versus getting towards the end? I think he's the biggest strong. I had to wear him down. And uh, being here at Wells, it's not bad off the margins, eh? It's not bad off the margins, isn't it? What was, the, uh, what was the game plan for you coming into this? You knew you were fighting a guy who was perhaps more heavily wrestling based. Obviously, you have a wrestling background yourself. Uh, what was the game plan coming in? I just tried to open him up with the underhooks, heavy on the head. But he did a good job. He snapped me down, hit some really beautiful, nice snap downs. But he didn't follow up, so it allowed me some time to recover, push back and get my own attacks. But uh, we have two high-level wrestlers, man. It's, sometimes it's going to be like that. Someone's got to make the first mistake. So that's, that's pretty much what it came down to. What, uh, what was going through your head when you came off the edge of the mats uh, over there with that neck grip? I mean, you held it for a long time. You must have felt that the, the grip was there. I felt like I, I should have been able to reverse that with the far outside leg on the butterfly hook, sweeping back inside. I tried to do that towards the end, but uh, not enough room to work with. That part, I tried to just get back to my feet, see if I could sneak around, take the back. But uh, he did a good job recovering. Uh, when we spoke yesterday, you know, I said, what was your motivation for, for coming and doing uh, these sort of matches away from MMA for a bit? And you said, you know, you're always looking to challenge yourself, stay busy. Uh, has this experience been a good one for you? Yeah, man. It, it, these matches aren't, they're not easy, man. Uh, I know people had me come in here as a favorite, but I was looking at this like Mike's been putting in a lot of time and he, you know, he wanted to win this one bad. So um, I had to shape up and get into a little bit of shape before coming out here. Um, I, I definitely would love to come back. Um, you guys can check me out on OnlyFans. <laughs> well, look, it's been an absolute pleasure having you here. Thank you for, for the match tonight. Any uh, passing words to the fans at home before we let you go and uh, celebrate? Hey, thanks for supporting me through the highs and the lows. Man, I've been down before. I built myself back up, became a UFC champion, defended the belt three times in a row. And uh, this is not the last you're going to see of me. So I got a message for Mr. Sugar Tits because he's still that to me. Hey, 
Give me my rematch or fight Marab. It's that simple. Stop ducking the top contenders and be a man and be a real champ and fight the best of the best. That's what I did. Now you need to turn around and do the same exact shit. Let's go. You heard it here, ladies and gentlemen, your winner, Aljamain Funkmaster Sterling.